Hello, hello, and welcome back to a Beatles podcast called Things We Said Today. This is a show that most of the time we record bi-weekly, and we cover every aspect of the Beatles history, their years together, their solo years, their music, individual songs, albums, you name it, we cover it all here on this show. I'm Ken Michaels. I'm one of the three regular co-hosts of this program. Hopefully you're familiar with some of the other shows that I do on the Beatles, including a syndicated radio program called Every Little Thing, currently on 50 radio stations, and another uh, talk show podcast, which is on the solo Beatles called Talk More Talk. And I also have my own Beatles-centric YouTube channel called Ken Michaels Radio. I'm being joined by my two regulars here on this show. First of all, a man who's been a fixture in New York radio now for nearly 40 years on WFUV. And he has done a lot of great programming through the years and has been a frequent guest at the Fest for Beatles fans. And he's been on many panel discussions with the likes of us and other Beatle luminaries. And uh, that is Darren DeVivo. Hi, Darren. Hi, happy holidays, everyone. And we also have Alan Cozen. Alan is a frequent writer for Beatle Fan Magazine. And for many years, he was the writer at the classical department at the New York Times, wrote a lot of articles on classical music. He's also the author of a couple of Beatle books, including The Beatles from the Cavern to the Rooftop and Got That Something how I Want to Hold Your Hand Changed Everything. And he also has a brand new book coming out October 15th next year, The McCartney Legacy, that is written with Adrian Sinclair on Paul's solo career, part one of the series, I should add. Hello, Alan. Hey, Ken. Hello, Darren. Hello, everyone. Howdy. <laughs> Happy holidays. Yes. Happy and... Um, as you can imagine, this is our last show for 2021. Something that I got into the habit of doing back in my early years in radio on WDHA, I would uh, do a year in review show and uh, talk about all the, the major releases of the past year. And then, then also provide a wish list for what I'd like to see happen in the following year. Usually I did that show with Al Sussman and Tom Franjone, but I carried on that tradition on things we said today from uh, the beginning when we started the show with Steve Marinucci. And we also do the same thing on my other podcast show, Talk More Talk. So we're going to be doing the same thing on the show this time out, looking back at 2021 and looking forward to 2022. So uh, before we do that, we have uh, the latest Beatle news to get to. Not as much um, in the last couple of weeks since our last show, but a few major news items here. First of all, there's a brand new video that premiered on December the 15th for George Harrison's classic, My Sweet Lord. Directed by Lance Bangs, the video stars Fred Armisen and Vanessa Bayer as metaphysical special agents who are tasked by the head of a clandestine agency, played by Mark Hamill, to search for which can't be seen. And the video includes cameos from Ringo, Joe Walsh, Jeff Lynne, Natasha Leggero, uh, Olivia and Danny Harrison, Rosanna Arquette, Weird Al Yankovic, and others. Danny served as executive producer with David Zonshine. Funny moments include when Fred goes into a movie theater where the poster for the film reads the title, For All Things Must Pass. Weird Al works at the concession stand and where there's a list on the wall of all that you can buy, there are titles of songs from All Things Must Pass. And Ringo and Joe Walsh are sitting together in the theater throwing popcorn at Fred. And on the movie is the guy that did the somersaults in the Got My Mind Set On You video. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, there's Ringo showing Fred how to do a drum beat with uh, Fred's flashlight and a laser with uh, Mark Hamill resembling Star Wars. Uh, good fun stuff all around. Have you guys seen this video? Yep, yep, it was fun, and like you say. Yeah. Pretty much as yeah. you described it. <laughs> yeah, kind of curious as to why they're doing this now, I guess because of the All Things Must, pa must Pass box set coming out um, and it's the anniversary, I suppose. 
It didn't do anything for me with video. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I don't know, because I'm listening to the song and I'm like, what does this have to do with the song? There's plenty of videos where the song has nothing to do I know, with what they're doing in the video. I know. It was almost like, why? It was okay. It was fun to pick out people. Mm-hmm. It also made me realize how old I am because more than half of the people in the video, I don't know who they are. Indeed. And, you know, I mentioned <laughs> a few random names that like my kids and they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, you're old, Dad. You wouldn't know. <laughs> um, but, you know, and then going back, because I didn't catch Danny Harrison the first time. Hmm. And I don't think, I think I spotted Olivia the first time through, but then went back. I forget who the other person was that kind of slipped past me. Um, I don't remember now, but it, it was a, it didn't really do much for me. Hmm. You know, all right. It was cute. It was nothing that, I don't know. I just, it just didn't seem to, it seemed out of place, out of left field and, uh, you know, was okay. A lot of effort put in for. Hmm. There seems to be, you know, some kind of an effort in recent years to make videos for songs for which there weren't videos in the past, just to have something to represent it. Right. So um, maybe that's the case here. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And and I'm fully, I'm only, when, whenever I say things like this, uh, you know, my mind may change, you know, I may decide one day, just let me watch it again, or someone may point something out to me that'll change the way I think about it. I think I was expecting something that was more George driven, mm. or, you know, that was that had a little more to do with the song. And uh, like, you know, I, and getting, you know, the last people I expect to see in a video like this is two cast members from Saturday Night Live of recent cast members. Mm. So that may, that may have kind of thrown me off from the beginning. Like, why is Fred Armisen and Vanessa Bayer, uh, you know, in the video? Mm. But um, you do see that footage, the same that you saw in the um, Living in the Material World documentary of George in his garden, you know, among yeah. the flowers, yeah. or I, I think they're tulips, yeah. you know? Um, so they, they, yeah. They snuck that in there, which yeah. was nice. And it was cool, you know, like I said, the quick cameos. And in this day and age, we can control it. We can go back and watch it as opposed to, mm. you know, catching it on uh, on television when you couldn't rewind or don't know when you'll be able to see something a second time. Right. Uh, Weird Al and the popcorn, selling popcorn was kind of funny, mm-hmm. I guess. Okay. But ultimately... But we all go through that as we get older, all these new names that appear that you're not familiar with. But it's a mixture of veterans, too, that we do know, well, like, name, like Joe Walsh with Ringo. And the new names seem to be growing. Yes. <laughs> all right. So let's move on then to uh, another major news item. Ringo Starr is releasing a new book. And it's coming out around Valentine's Day in February, sold exclusively through Julian's Auctions to be titled Lifted. Described as, uh, in Ringo's words, fab images and memories in my life with the Beatles from ac- across the universe. This is a hardcover coffee table size book, which offers in words and pictures Ring- Ringo's singular and revealing perspective on his time in the greatest band in music history. Ringo says with a laugh, I am not writing this book as a Beatles historian. I am writing this book as a Beatle. And there's only a couple of us who can do that. Starr explains, I didn't keep all these photos. These fantastic images came back to me in recent years from here, there, and everywhere, online and off, and have somehow helped me get back to seeing my life with the Fab Four through fresh eyes. A lot of the photos in this book I spotted on my phone and on my computer and lifted them because they brought back so many fabulous memories. In recent years, I'd gather these Beatle photos that I sometimes barely remembered. After a while, I thought how great it would be to lift these fantastic photos and some of my other favorites for charity and tell my true tales that they inspire about what the four of us, John, Paul, George, and Ringo went through back in the day. And the best thing is that it's all for a good cause because the money is going to our Lotus Foundation. 
That's Ringo's charity that he's had for many years. According to Starr, what people ask me about the Beatles, I often tell them, you better ask Paul, because somehow he seems to remember everything. But along with great projects like Get Back, seeing so many of these amazing Beatles images has really brought back those days to me and all the love and friendship that we four shared back then. So this is a book full of Beatle images that many people haven't seen and the stories that I'm sharing with a little help from my, from my longtime writer friend, David Wilde. We've all been through a pretty tough time for a lot of people who've been locked down. And this book has really lifted my spirits and took me back to where I once belonged in a whole new way. And in the end, that's why this new book is called Lifted. The Beatles changed my life forever. So it's about getting back and giving back. Proceeds from this book and from a limited edition, 500 copies edition signed by Ringo will benefit his charity, the Lotus Foundation. The limited edition sells for $495. To order this book, go to juliansauctions.com. Great idea there from Ringo. Okay. Interesting um, copyright question it raises if he's just like, if these are not photos he took, but photos that he found. I mean, I, I know that in, in putting together the, you know, the McCartney legacy book, we found a lot of photos and, you know, it's, it's, it's a not insignificant amount of work to first of all, trace how to get in contact with the photographer, who the photographer mm -hmm. is, and then getting the rights, you know? Um, so I, I wonder if, you know, the fact that it is Ringo and it's a charity and, it, you know, they're, uh, figuring that there's not going to be an issue um but i wonder i mean i wonder what lengths they went to to find the photographers if if these are you know photos that he saw was scrolling through his phone and saying oh i like that i'm going to use it you know mm. if you're a normal person you can't just do that i mean it's possible that ringo can but you know just because of you know it might not it might be that because of who he is they're not going to claim copyright or something, but it's, it's kind of taking a, an interesting risk, if that's the case. Mm. Um, I'm sure he's thinking no one's going to challenge him. He's Ringo. Awesome. And like you said, it's for a charity. Or they may have mm. a large enough staff to track down people who, who it comes from and get the rights. I, I don't know. Interesting. Mm. You know. What do you do if you lift a photo off the internet and you don't and you really don't know who took it. And there's no way, how do you go about finding that out sometimes? Um, well, and you know, in some cases you could publish it and hope that the person comes forward and isn't too litigious about it, you know? Mm. Um, but you never know. I mean, once it's published, they sort of have you over a barrel because you've published it, you know, mm. and they can possibly demand what they want. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, you know, I know that um, we generally have tried to avoid using stuff that we don't know where it's from or who it's by or, you know, haven't contacted them to get the rights for it. Uh, but there are a lot of, you know, magazines and places out there, fan magazines, for instance, that don't do any rights clearing at all. Mm. Um, but they're a little more below the radar than a book by Ringo would be. Right. So I'll be interested to see. <laughs> what happens mm. or if you know in the book there's some sort of a, you know uh, something on the copyright page talking about that aspect of it you know it's an interesting it's idea though yeah for a book yeah um another news item here concerning a major book coming out and this is with special thanks to john bazzini who has the Beatles in print together and solo Facebook page. Mm. Uh, a new book is coming out on George Harrison, May 24th next year called Came the Lightning, Came the Light, 20 Poems for George by mm. Olivia Harrison. Mm. A quote from L Olivia appears in its description in Amazon. Time, we take no notice of it, but for its loss. I wanted to stop time on the day George died so that I wouldn't ever have to look back. Yet here I am, 20 years and 20 poems later, one for each year, I suppose. I didn't plan it that way, but here they are. Thoughts, feelings, and words about life and death, but mostly love and our journey to the end. 
That's a quote from Olivia. So that'll be coming out next May. Interesting idea yeah, for a book. Seems pretty intense. Also, a new tour is being announced that is similar to what we experienced in 2019 with a tribute to the Beatles' White Album with a superstar cast. This will be a tribute to the Beatles, uh, Beatles albums Rubber Soul and Revolver with a band consisting of some of the same characters and some newer ones. Todd Rundgren, Danny Lane this time, Joey Molland is back, Christopher Cross is back, Jason Sheff from the band Chicago is back, and Jay DeMarcus from Rascal Flats. The concert will be a mixture of all these players playing some of their own hits along with the songs from both those Beatle albums. One show has been announced already at the Ridgefield Playhouse in Ridgefield, Connecticut on March the 3rd, and we'll keep you posted as we hear more. And let's hope this doesn't get affected by, right. by COVID. You know, I'm always nervous about announcing concerts these days, you know, because you never know what, what might happen. And that's it for the news. So uh, right now, we're going to go into our main topic, which is looking back at the previous year, 2021, and we'll follow that with what we'd like to see happen in 2022. I don't know how uh, either of you can dispute the fact that, that this year was a truly amazing year because of all the releases that came out audio wise in particular, and of course, video. Uh, but as far as archival box sets, we had a plastic ono band one. We had one for all things must pass. We had one for let it be. And um, with the plastic ono band, there was a fantastic book to accompany that. And there was also the get back book to accompany the video for get back on Disney plus. Um, plus we had uh, two EPs from Ringo released uh, this past year and the McCartney three album actually came out in December of last year, but it carried over into the new year. So I think that played a major part in the past year. Um, and we had the McCartney three reimagined release. So let's talk a bit about what you guys felt has been uh, the highlights for you. And there we're just talking about the major ones. We can also talk about book releases if you want to. Um, we should definitely bring up the McCartney 321 video yeah. series with Rick Rubin. But Alan, let's start with you. What, uh, what really stood out in this past year for you as a Beatle fan? Um, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't begin to attempt to dispute that this was uh, an incredible year for, um, for people like us. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's, uh, it just, it was an expensive year. Um, mm. But on the other hand, you know, in, in, along with the expense, there were things like, I mean, depending if you already subscribed to, you know, Hulu and uh, Disney Plus, um, all that was almost free, <laughs> you know, I mean, and if you watch it many times, it uh, gets, gets freer if you amortize it over the number of times you watch it. Um, but still, it, not expensive, you know, I mean, people were complaining about having to subscribe to Disney Plus, and they had a, you know, right in time for a sale for a dollar ninety nine for the first month. So, uh, you know, really, uh, that wasn't a big deal. Um, I, I would Worth have every to put, penny. <laughs> I would have to put Get Back at really the top of the list. I mean, since the anthology, we haven't had that much video of, you know, and we and we've never had that much video of a single event in the Beatles history. You know, that really was extraordinary. Um, I thought it was beautifully done. And, uh, you know, we'll, it was only a, a couple of episodes ago we talked about it in, in detail. So I won't go through all that again, but I learned an awful lot from it. And that's coming from the perspective of having listened to all the Nagras and not to mention all the boots derived from the Nagras over the decades. Um, and yet seeing it, uh, just was a different experience and changed my perception of a lot of what was going on. Um, 
Fig Let It Be box. Um, I, I think of all the Beatles archival boxes, uh, Beatles as a group archival boxes, that one I think was the least interesting in a way. And um, at the time we reviewed it, I thought, well, okay, it will, if we take it as part of the whole thing with the book and the get back film and everything, then maybe it will all come together and, and you know, make sense, which, you know, yeah, it does. But on the other hand, there's so much stuff from say Twickenham that I would have liked to have seen on the Let It Be box set that uh, didn't make it. And, and of course, now we know that, um, you know, Peter Jackson's Mal uh, mono demixing system would have rendered the whole question of Twickenham being in mono moot. You know, I mean, that could have been made into a really good stereo mix, probably, with all those things like, you know, Susie's Parlor or Susie Parker, depending how you want to want to call it um and and so many other you know funny little jams and things that happened to Twickenham so that I, I wish I could include that as as one of my absolute top for the year but um probably not I, I think for box sets it would have to be it would be between all things must pass and plastic ono band and um I don't know that I really have a favorite I suppose plastic ono band gets um, some extra points for having an associated book, um, which is, you know, beautifully done. And like the Imagine book that came out with that reissue, you know, pretty much every detail you would want, pictures of all the tape boxes, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, really good information for someone who wants to, you know, just dive into it and spend some time. Um, Otherwise, among books, I mean, the, the Get Back book, uh, you know, goes with that project in a way, and, and that was really handy for all those transcripts. Um, I probably would have liked to have seen all the transcripts rather than an edited version of the transcripts. But on the other hand, I'd also like to have seen all 56 hours. Um, but I'll save the other 48 hours that we missed for uh, my 2022 picks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, and the McCartney um, 321 three, also absolutely a highlight. Uh, you know, there are things that one can say pro and con about various aspects of it, but, you know, that was a whole lot of time of Paul sitting there going through isolations of Beatles recordings and a very few of his own, which surprised me, his own solo ones. Um, I, I probably would have like to have seen a little more of that. So maybe if they do a three to one series next year, um, part two, um, he can do some more solo stuff, but that was, that was just great. You know, hearing all those isolations, a lot of which we've never heard before, you know, even, mm -hmm. even with the reissues and archival things. And so I should leave a couple of things for you guys. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Darren, how about you? All right, well, uh, hands down, the highlight, here's a surprise, for 2021 is the movie, The Beatles Get Back. I mean, I find it sometimes hard to, you know, uh, find the words to describe certain things, and this was one of them that was just so... Um, it was just so wonderful. And, and, and who would have thunk that at this point in time that there would be something, whether it be an album, a book, a song, or a movie or whatever, that would completely change the perception that we've had of one aspect of our favorite band that we've had for decades. We've thought certain things about this period uh, in Beatle history, and some of those things were completely turned on their head. Um, it also, uh, what was special for me, I think I mentioned this on our review show was, um, it really was the first time we got to hang out with the Beatles. It was the first time we really got to see them at work. We've seen many 
many clips of them live and we've seen clips of them in the studio and photos, but here we were spending hours upon hours with them and, and, and getting to actually know them as human beings, not just, you know, these uh, musical deities. Um, right. You know what I mean? We actually were, I mean, cause those were the little things that, you know, from seeing Paul McCartney smoke cigars uh, to uh, knowing that Ringo Starr farts. Um, uh, and, you know, <laughs> the way they worked together uh, in the studio, um, you know, the chemistry between them and also Mal Evans. Uh, um, I, I don't think I'm incorrect by saying this is really the first time we've got a peek into Mal Evans. Um, and I believe a book's coming. Uh, isn't That's it? right. Ken Womack is Ken behind Womack. a, a yeah. book on Mal, right? Yeah, but it's Our two book. parts. There's going to be two like parts altogether. Yeah. The Get Back film just kind of like opened up that door. The timing was perfect for, for Ken, uh, for his books now to come out. Now that so many people were either introduced to Mal for the first time, but in our case, um, it was the first time we get to actually see uh, to see what Mal was like, see how he worked with the Beatles. And, uh, and then the logistical things, like I, I get off on, you know, getting to see what Apple Studio was like and how, how, they, uh, how they worked in that studio and threw it together really at the last minute. And the rooftop performance, uh, I was getting chills. And I didn't think that I could get chills from, you know, from, from anything Beatle related anymore because I thought I'd seen and heard or at least had been exposed to just about everything. Peter Jackson's movie changed it all. And another thing which made it pretty amazing is we've been hearing about a Let It Be overhaul for several decades. We've been wanting the movie to come out on DVD. Um, maybe it was when we first started hearing about the possible reissue, perhaps VHS tapes were still being manufactured. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. But we've been hearing about the movie coming out again for so long. And it, who would have thought that at the end, at the end of the rainbow would be this, you know what I mean? Um, it was almost sad when it was over because I'm like, what's next? There's gotta be something else. Um, and that would, I'll get to my things that I'm looking forward to in the new year. I'll come back to the Get Back film. Of course, it's getting in on a physical, physical discs, but we'll talk about that in a few. Uh, so that is probably that not probably definitely is number one for me was the Get Back movie, just because, again, we got to look at the Beatles um, in a way we've never, never had before. And it was fascinating to see uh, to see them like they were hanging out with us like we were we were hanging out with them in the studios this is what it would have been like the personalities and how they talked to one another and into uh interacted with others i enjoyed uh, how paul really came off like a a loving father in in that day that uh the heather was was in the, in the studio with them but and and john lennon what joking around that you know we eat cats you know, that kind of twisted Lennon humor, which is sort of my kind of humor, I found hysterical. And, and, uh, uh, and, and, and then Heather's uh, impersonation, Yoko Ono, was a lot of fun, too. So yeah. uh, one of thousands of things in there. And I have cherry picked se scene sections. I have not watched it through again a whole time, but I've jumped around. Uh, but one of these days, I'm going to go right back to part one episode one, second one, and uh, start and watch it all over again. And I'm sure find things I missed the first time through. Uh, musically speaking, I have to go with the Old Things Must Pass box set is my favorite. The Let It Be set, I pretty much echo what Alan felt. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a slight bit of a letdown, uh, especially since, it, uh, you know, I think we're all in agreement that it left a lot of things out that should have and could have been there. Um, uh, and again, you hope that maybe they were left out for a reason and that there's more where that came from coming our way in the new year. Uh, but we'll see. 
Um, I'm not going to mention McCartney 3. I just did. But I'm not going to bring it up as one of my highlights because it technically came out a year ago in 2020. Mm. But the Imagined album uh, was an interesting addition to McCartney's catalog. I haven't felt the urge to go back to it. Uh, but uh, in putting together my year-end list of favorite songs and favorite albums for WFUV, one of my uh, song picks of the year was uh, the uh, version of, what was it, Seize the Day mm -hmm. that E.B. Yes. Bridgers appeared on uh, as one of my song highlights of 2021. Also on that list were a couple of tunes from Ringo's EPs. Uh, and you can't, you know, recap the year without saying that if I say all things in this past box set was number one, a very, very close second with the two EPs from Ringo Starr. Um, both, I think, musically on par, pretty much, give or take, with what he's been doing in recent years. Um, can't knock him. The quality is there. The songs are solid. Performances are great. Um, and I'm trying to find the two songs that I singled out because uh, I kind of made it uh, A and B in my song list. And I am a stickler for detail. Neither EP made it onto my year-end album list because they're not albums. <laughs> I'm not making an EP list. Right. So they wouldn't qualify. Uh, but I did acknowledge them and uh, singled out Teach Me to Tango as my pick from Zoom In is my favorite track from that and uh, Just the Way from Change the World. Um, so the, the biggie for me, the big highlight 2021 was the, the Beatles Get Back film, Peter Jackson's film. Musically speaking, uh, I'll go with the Old Things Must Pass box set and a runner up of the two EPs from Ringo Starr. Uh, as for books, um, that I found hard. There was a lot of books for many different reasons. Um, and I know it's a cop out to say this, but I'll go with the Get Back book. Um, I'll go with the Get Back book just because, uh, just because. I, I don't really have a reason because I'm, I, I can't knock any of them. Uh, you know, there were so many books that were published this year that all brought something significant to the table. Right. You know what I mean? So it's, for me, I found books very hard to single one out. So might as well stick with the, uh, the release of the year. And that's the movie Get Back. And so the corresponding book. Interesting that neither of you mentioned the McCartney lyrics book. Hmm. Which I, just well, came out. So, yeah, that, I mean, uh, what a major release that was. Yeah. I don't know. I liked it a lot. I really, really did. But it didn't, you know, wasn't the one thing that jumped out and stuck with me. Hmm. Okay. You know, it's, it's like we say about, you know, when we're talking about best albums, worst albums, whatnot, something has to drop, you know what I mean, underneath the yeah. real true uh, things that knocked you out. And, and, the lyrics book was was right up near there, but not the thing that, uh, you know, that was my favorite. I think for what he was doing in the lyrics book, um, I enjoyed McCartney three, two, one more. You know, oh, yeah. uh, the lyrics yeah. book obviously touched on quite a lot more songs than three, two, one did. Um, but on the other hand, three, two, one, let us hear bits. Um, which automatically sort of raises it in the, uh, uh, you know, list of experiences. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So there's that. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I'm amazed that I overlooked the lyrics book, actually. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't, like, like as Darren said, I, I don't know that um, I would have included it as like all the way at the top because we talked about that a few weeks ago too. And, and there were, you know, various um, issues I have with it. So, but it's good to have. It was just so much actually this year yeah. that it's very, know. Easy to, you know, to overlook something. Um, yeah, I think if Get Back had not come out, if Peter Jackson's movie hadn't been released this year, three, two, one might've been uh, what I might think would be a highlight because I just loved hearing the songs deconstructed and Paul talking about them uh, the way he did. And I really, really, you know, I know I'm old fashioned, but I really hope there is a physical release of the doc, you know, as one 
kind of everything mm. kind of put together maybe with an informative booklet or something um and maybe some extra stuff that maybe they talked about that didn't make the final cut that would be nice and i think we said we'd like to see a follow-up too because there's so many songs to go through right and that man's catalog beatles and solo but um i share pretty much the same opinions as you two guys uh have with uh the releases of the past year only i pretty much liked everything although at the bottom <laughs> would be mccartney three imagined um not that i didn't like it uh admittedly i haven't listened to it as much as everything else that's come out this past year um and i do like the whole concept of taking paul's vocals and backing tracks from mccartney three handing them to another artist and seeing what they can do with it and sometimes using paul's vocals some not using them at all remixing, um, remixing or re yeah or yeah it, others yeah it's a very common thing that's being done now these days um and i think it's a good way of introducing mccartney's music to a younger generation i like the whole concept of it i get a little frustrated as someone who wants to see mccartney collaborate with more people i'd rather that he write songs with these people like beck or phoebe bridgers you know whether they're one-offs or not i would probably find that more interesting but uh, i'm glad that it came out and i'm all for that particular concept and and why it was done but everything else of this past year was so tremendous and uh it really shouldn't come as a surprise. I know, uh, you know to a lot of people, I'm Mr. Solo Guy, but Get Back blew everything away yeah. <laughs> uh, this past year. I mean, it, it's such a miracle that we were treated to this. I mean, we've never gotten to see the Beatles going through the process of creating a song from scratch, like Get Back. What a riveting moment that was mm -hmm. to capture on film. And you know, it's a blessing that they actually recorded all this stuff in January of 69. Wouldn't it be something if we actually had film footage of the Beatles working on all their albums mm. from start to finish? We just don't have that. But thankfully, they did this that month of 69. And all these years, we've never seen the footage other than what was in Let It Be. And so it's absolutely breathtaking. This is going to be something that I feel will be a reference used for everything about the end of the Beatles. People are always going to be looking back at Get Back because there's so much there to study. And every time you watch it, you learn something new yeah. or you observe something you hadn't seen before. Or there's something that pops out of one of them that they say that you didn't catch the first time around. And you see the way that they work together and their relationships and you know, all these years hearing that these were miserable sessions, um, you tended to believe that. That was a narrative that we've been given all these years. And, you know, you notice that even including the, the fight, the fight, the argument that, that Paul and George had, which has always been blown out of proportion, you know, they never shouted at each other. <laughs> they never raised their voices. You know, everything was pretty civil with them, even in that argument that they had. And once you went to Apple, I mean, all that I'm seeing is the four of them enjoying each other. And then Billy Preston coming along and lighting up the room mm -hmm. and giving you that extra spark to the band. I mean, I, I said this in one of my podcast shows. I'm not sure if it was this one. But my first thought after watching this whole thing was, gosh, I wish John and George were here to watch this because their impression of that time period might be completely different from what they've been thinking all these years. I yeah. know that John and Yoko watched the film with um, uh, Jan Wenner when it came out, and that's the memory that John had of Let It Be in those sessions, was that movie. He's not remembering all this other stuff. And probably George didn't remember that either. See, I have, but also, sorry, I'm yeah. sorry, Ken. I keep cutting you off. Yeah, no, I, I kind of uh, look at it like, you know, you tend to remember the bad things. You know, when you look back, in hmm. general, generally speaking, uh, unfortunately, it's the the good things that tend to get lost in the shuffle. 
you remember the negative things and perhaps that's what uh, the deal was. I mean, let's face it, they did have a so-called fight of some sort, John and George. Um, Alan Klein was looming. Hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, we're, we're talking about probably what a matter of weeks before Alan Klein really becomes a player here a couple of weeks after Let It Be. Years pass by, John, George's memories, you know, maybe kind of bring them all together. Let It Be, Get Back equals the beginning of Alan Klein. And when, you know, it wasn't the same. So, you know, their memories went towards the negative, I guess, of this period. And like you said, it would have been great if they could have seen it and been reminded that, no, there was a little rough, a few rough patches here and there, maybe significant rough patches, you might consider them, but there was a whole heck of a lot of positivity uh, in mm. that month. Absolutely. But also one other thing that I try to keep into perspective is, is that this was just under eight hours. There's another 48 hours that we haven't seen. So maybe there were there were some miserable times that we don't know about. So, but we certainly have a much more of an understanding of that time period. And Peter Jackson just did a phenomenal job. I liked the way the whole thing was produced. I liked the way the first episode ended with George quitting, ending with drama like that, yep. and starting with episode two and that look on Paul's face when he doesn't know and John hasn't shown up yet. And then there were two, everybody talks about that scene yeah. and it's so revealing. And all these years that let it be gave you the impression that Paul was the bossy one. He was domineering. He was hard to, to get along with. The more that you study Beatle history, the more that you realize that, you know, somebody in the band had to be the driver, had to keep pushing them had to keep coming up with ideas um, to keep them going. And, uh, you know, Paul was that guy once Brian Epstein died. And um, you see it at the very beginning of the sessions there at Twickenham, when Paul feels like they're not really going very far. They're not finishing up songs. There's no structure in what they're doing. And he's gradually kind of freaking out a little bit, thinking that by the end of this month, we got to have an album and we got to have a concert. And in the beginning, a TV documentary, too. I, I think that, you know, there's, there's so many people right now that have Beatle podcasts and YouTube channels that have done things on Get Back. And maybe some of them might be a little burnt out on Get Back. I can't envision a time when I'll, when I'll ever be. <laughs> I can keep talking about this documentary and I'm, you know, every time I watch it, like I said, I'm going to learn something new that I that I didn't know before or observe something but it was so brilliantly done yeah and to see the love in that band especially once they went to apple you know or just to see john and paul standing up next to each other real close to each other singing right to each other and enjoying it mm -hmm. or doing doing the two of us with the clenched mouth you know i mean i love that they're yeah. having fun they were enjoying themselves. And once things got cleared up with George, the atmosphere really changed. And it was, you know, I think they genuinely enjoyed being together and working on these songs. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's absolutely riveting to see, to see this unfold before your eyes. I think the clenched teeth thing was, um, I think they were trying to be ventriloquists, yeah. you know, like, to sing the song without your mouth moving, you know? No. I think that was the, what the idea was. I, I think that, you know, um, in terms of some of the criticism that I've seen of the Get Back, if Get Back film, um, I think in, in some cases, people mistook what Peter Jackson was going for here, which he explained in the podcast. So um, perhaps they didn't, you know, catch that explanation. Um, he wasn't remaking Let It Be. He was making a film about that project, which included the making of Let It Be. And he didn't want to just sort of like do a, a very long recut of Let It Be. So one criticism that you hear is that 
the January 31st session, the day after mm. the rooftop, when they did the in-studio performances um, for the cameras, that it's very much a synopsis as as Peter Jackson shows it. We don't get the full tunes. We get, you know, it just cuts from one thing to the other. But the thing is, we got all those full, the full tunes in Let It Be. And he's presenting this documentary knowing or believing that Let It Be will be released at some point too. And in fact, he said in the podcast, he'd kind of like to see it as, you know, one box set with, his film and let it be together. So in that case, you get those songs from January 31st and you don't get them repeated. You know, obviously the rooftops going to be repeated to, uh, you know, the 20 minutes that Michael Lindsay Hogg used. Um, although I think he, Peter used different angles and uh, it's a, a different thing and it's, it's the complete version of it. And the other one is the let it be version of it. But, um, you know, I, I think there was an, he made an effort and he, and he said this expressly, you know, he made an effort not to show us the same thing we saw in Let It Be. And so you do see certain things that are the same, like George gets a shock from the microphone, but I think, I'm, I can't remember if that was the same angle or a different angle, but, uh, you know, I think uh, where it was going to be similar, he went for different angles. Um, and, uh, and the thing about, um, you know, not showing complete songs, I, 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 do, I do hope that um, if Disney allows him to do an extended cut, that some of those songs are completed um, that were shown only in excerpt in the film. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it could be a question of whether there's cover, certainly a Twickenham, whether there was coverage, film coverage for the complete song, you know, and if there isn't, you've got to get, get film from someplace else and, and sort of fill it in. And it, it could be that he felt, and we can ask him if he turns up again, which we hope he does, um, you know, it could be that he felt, okay, rather than just sort of, you know, fill out the missing video from this song with other stuff. Why not just move on to, you know, the next thing? We know what those songs are. We've heard the bootlegs. We've heard, you know, um, I, 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 I'd like to see some of them filled out to be their complete thing, like the aforementioned Susie Parker slash parlor. Um, <laughs> that's shown only partly in the film. And it's such a short thing. It, you could just have the whole thing, I would think, without a problem. But um, yeah, anyway, I just wanted yeah. to address some of the, the, the things that I've been reading about, you know, how come, in, you know, January 31st was only like a synopsis. And, you know, there were reasons that, that he talked about before we saw it. So it, it shouldn't have been that much of a surprise. But um, yeah. Well, my, my only complaint, which I said when we reviewed this, was, um, you know, I do wish that the concert, the Apple rooftop concert, was just the pure concert. And I think all the different, um, all the stuff going on on the street and the police going up in the Apple building, that's all fantastic and great to watch. I just wish that there's some, I wish there was some way we can see just the Beatles and nobody else or just the people on the Apple rooftop doing the concert. And these days with what you can do with DVDs and Blu-rays, you can make that a bonus feature yeah. if you want to. Mm -hmm. So who knows what lies next year for a future release. The possibilities are endless. Mm -hmm. And when we reviewed the Let It Be box set, um, which probably, you know, I still loved it because I love the music, but there's so much they could have done there audio wise from what they recorded in that month, whether it was Twickenham or at Apple, um, you could put that onto Blu-ray audio, you know, uh, on the box set if you want to, or there could be a soundtrack album, which I think is wishful thinking, but it would be nice if that was kept separate as a separate release. I'd love to see that happen, but um, no, I mean, this, this just floored me, this entire documentary after almost eight hours of watching this, I really was sad when it ended. I wasn't bored at that point. I wanted, to, I wanted more of this. Mm -hmm. And um, just to see how they work together, 
that relationship of the four of them is so fascinating to watch. Yeah. You know, it, 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 it's, it's, you know, this was the greatest gift we've been given. And it's, it's the biggest release for Beatles fans to me since the Beatles anthology. Yeah. And that's saying a lot with all these box sets coming out. Um, but what a blessing this was for this to come out this year. Yeah. And um, I did like, um, I loved <laughs> the Plastic on Old Band box set and All Things Must Pass. Kind of tough for me to say which I like more. I do love the the difference between how the Lennon camp and the Harrison camp handles these things because with the Lennons, it's like release everything or just about everything that you can. And um, I don't know how anybody could possibly complain uh, with all the different versions of every single song on the Plastic on Old Band album to the point where it's hard to tell one version from another, but you really saw any kind of development from any of the songs. Um, and All Things Must Pass, what the Harrison family chose was much more selective, whittled down to the best stuff. I love that whole disc of demos where it's just George, Ringo, and Klaus Vorman. And for people who, you know, remember, I'm not, I'm not an anti-Phil Spector person. I love the production of All Things Must Pass as it was. But for people that want to hear the songs without Phil, well, you got that disc there. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to hear Wawa, if that was a song that you complained about because of Phil's production on it, or you don't like the wall of sound, this is just those three people playing it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's so many great moments on, on there. That version of I Dig Love that rocks, very different yeah. from the version that was on uh, All Things Must Pass. But, you know, there were two tremendous box sets that came out this past year. And Let It Be, I still loved it, but... Yeah for what it could have been, you know? And I did say it when we reviewed it, you could have taken those two discs of outtakes and put them all on one CD. Yeah. Um, so there just wasn't enough of that in there. Um, also, I, I will say the McCartney lyrics book was a definite highlight despite its flaws. Um, you know, just to know how McCartney's brain works how he came up with certain ideas for songs. And even it's, you know, you're getting into the mind of Paul and there are certain things that probably only make sense in his mind. <laughs> and he's sharing that with us, uh, the creative process. The only thing that bothered me about that book was not giving credit to, you know, Denny Lane on Mull of Kintyre, not having one song that he wrote with Elvis Costello in there. Um, and there was one song with Eric Stewart. I think Pretty Little Head was in there. No mention of Eric Stewart. Um, but, you know, this is really as in-depth as you'll probably get with McCartney. And he could put out several books just like this. And I'd love to hear what he has to say now, even if his memories may not be 100% sharp. Whatever we can get to understand how he came up with the songs that he did is something that I treasure. And 321 was a tremendous special because it is great to actually see him listening back to these isolated tracks and then that triggers memories, kind of like what Ringo is talking about with this new book, Lifted. Mm -hmm. And it seems very spontaneous and it's fascinating to hear what he remembers about these songs. I wish I knew how they decided which songs made that series because there's so many songs to pick from. Was it already chosen before they even went into the studio and, and did that special? Yeah. It did seem actually a little random. It did to me around. too. But that actually yeah. then created like a sense of anticipation. What are they going to do next? It has to have yeah. been mm. chosen because they had the strips with the song right. titles and the, and the tracks. So Rick Rubin at least had been through uh, everything that he wanted to talk about. Um, it seems obvious, uh, and knowing the degree to which Paul likes to control things that he's in, it would be unusual if he went in not knowing what songs were going to be talked about. It's possible, but it would be unusual. Mm -hmm. And yet there were those moments when it seemed like, you know, these memories came to him in a flash, you know, mm -hmm. 
of remembering what it was like in the studio working on these songs, especially the Beatle ones. So, I mean, that was riveting too. Um, the two EPs from Ringo. Look, anything that Ringo does at this point, you know, it's, it's all, it's, it's gravy. <laughs> Whatever you get from Ringo or Paul, you know, because they don't have to do anything for the rest of their lives. They've given us so much. So anything we get now is a bonus. But still, you can tell from these two EPs that he's really enjoying himself, that he's in a good place. Even having to deal with COVID, this is the best way to get around it. Um, the only sad thing about it is that so much of these songs were sent into him digitally and not with people in the room with him. You know, I'm sure there were moments when that happened, but it wasn't like your typical album where everybody was in the studio at the same time, for the most part, track by track. But he made the most of the situation. So I admire him for, for doing anything. Um, I love the collaboration that he's continuing with Sam Hollander, Teach Me to Tango is a big highlight for me of the songs that are on those two EPs. The Linda Perry song, Coming Undone, I love a lot. Um, just the fact that Ringo's keeping at it. I'm just so grateful for that. And so, um, you know, the highest moment of the year was Get Back. Definitely Plastic on All Band, All Things Must Pass, McCartney Lyrics book, Ringo's EPs. Um, those were the definite highest moments mm -hmm. uh, of the year for me. I think right. um, another thing that, that might be worth mentioning is that a number of these things um, get the back, get back film to a degree. Um, and obviously the release of all things must pass. Um, and also, you know, maybe we should mention the book um, about that album uh, by Ken Womack and Jason mm. Krupa. Um, you know, I, I had said that P the Plastic Ono band bought, came, you know, that had a book uh, associated with it that was, you know, and and, and I didn't mention theirs because it's a different kind of book. You know, there is a book about it written by, you know, people who've researched it. And uh, whereas the Plastic Ono band book was, uh, you know, put together by, Yoko and company and had access to all those tape boxes and lyric sheets and all that stuff. So it was a fundamentally different kind of thing. But what I started off to say was that, you know, even though Get Back has, you know, a lot of the attention in 321 and all that, that in a way, uh, you know, we have a dark horse here. Uh, you know, some of these things put a focus on George that made people think a little differently about him or more about him. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it put him into the spotlight more than he had been. And the fact that all things must pass and get back came out in the same year um, and that get back showed a little bit of him working on something and all things must pass and things like that. And, uh, and the get back book talked a little about more about it too. Um, I think, I think George has come out of 2021 with a level of respect somewhat higher than he had generally speaking. I mean, not among us, I think we always have had it, but I think among the general public who, you know, thinks of the Beatles as John and Paul and those other guys, you know. Um, I think George is, was brought a bit more into the spotlight by these releases as well. Yeah, that book really is tremendous, All Things Must Pass. It's not just on the album. It's a lot right. about the relationship between George and Eric Clapton. Right. But um, there's so many things I learned in that book. And I love the angle that they took there with the relationship of George and Eric. One thing that still blows me away, which I hadn't heard before until I read, uh, read the book, was that George Harrison was at seven sessions with Phil Spector while he was working on the Let It Be album. Which, you know, they mentioned that in the book there. So it's not like the Beatles has left Phil Spector on his own. George was there and he was involved in, in some way, at least listening to what Phil was doing. Mm -hmm. So very interesting. Yeah, there's that book. Um, there's also uh, the book, The Beatles 100, that I liked a lot. Those were just pinpointing 100 
pivotal moments in the history of uh, the Beatles group and solo careers. Um, there was a book that I have to admit I haven't read yet. <laughs> There's so many of them that, you know, they keep piling up because Beatle books are endless. But um, there was a book that was written about Jimmy McCullough by Paul Sally called Little Wing, which everyone who's read it has been raving about it. So I'd like to at least acknowledge that that book came out this year. Jude Kessler's book, it, this is the, um, I think it's the fifth one in her series on John called Shades of Life Part One that came out and lots of people love her work. The book that Bruce Spizer just put out, which is on Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine, really the whole period that followed the release of Sgt. Pepper. So it includes Magical Mystery Tour, the film, and the album and the single for Lady Madonna and then also Yellow Submarine, the film and the album, everything but the White Album in that period because Bruce Spies already put out a book on the White Album. Mm -hmm. So there's that, there's the book that, um, that we, we actually interviewed here on, on our show. And I just did an interview with the couple of Laura Cortner and Dr. Bob on Yellow Submarine. It's all on the mind inside the Beatles Yellow Submarine, uh, volume two. There's that. So some really interesting books that came out this past year. Any uh, other audio releases you want to speak of? I, we did review the Ramon tribute that came out this past year. And I think the two of you were not that impressed by it because it was so close to the original um, in the arrangements of the songs that Paul and Linda gave to the Ram album, correct? It, uh, I guess. I, I, I <laughs> don't even remember. <laughs> it just didn't, uh, it didn't really, it just simply put, it didn't really blow me away. Okay, well, I really appreciated it mm -hmm. because I liked the combination of being faithful to the originals and some of the arrangements were a little bit different than what was on the, on the album. And it's a difficult album to, to try to recreate, you know, with Paul's yeah. vocals especially are off the charts <laughs> on that album on something like Monkberry Moon Delight. It was so, a different, yeah, difficult I album to make in the first place. <laughs> yeah. So, and we're going to learn more about that in your book. We'll be talking out, about uh, Alan's book in a year. We have to make that the number one highlight, though. You yeah, know, that's the true. agreement that we made with Alan. This is true. I see. We can tell the folks that yeah. no matter what comes out right. in right. 2022, <laughs> if there's a DVD Blu-ray of Get Back, still Alan's book has to be number one. Mm, I don't know about that. I might <laughs> 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 what about looking forward? Yes. Crystal ball about 2022 and what we'd like to see ha happen. Okay. I'll start with you this time, Darren. All right. Um, guess what? I'd love to see the Get Back movie on Blu-ray. <laughs> really? I had no idea, idea you'd be saying that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I hope that happens. I think that has to happen. Um, so that would be at the top of my wish list for 2022. Um, and any, any, in any form, I'm not going to split hairs and say I got to, you know, got to have the Let It Be movie. Uh, got to have this, got to have that. I want just an expanded Blu-ray uh, uh, physical release of uh, Peter Jackson's film. If there ever was one that uh, deserved it, it's this. Um, maybe uh, wishful thinking on uh, this next one, but I've been saying for a few years, Ringo Starr deserves a box set himself. Um, and I mean, I think it's pretty kind of simple the way it could be structured. I'm sure Rhino Records could sink their teeth into a box set um, that would cover what the Starstruck anthology covered, that period of uh, 76 to, uh, it would have been 83 or so, and maybe even some other tracks pushing it later into the 80s. I don't know how it would work. You know, that one, once he gets into the different indie labels that he would record with and going back to Capitol and recording for Mercury and then Universal, I don't know if an anthology is possible of... Well uh, we had the that late we, period. We had the compilation of photograph, and that went all the way back to sentimental journey to yeah. the newest stuff of that time. I guess I guess there's a way, and and of yeah. course, 
you know, who knows, Ringo may own his masters like of the Koch material. Um, for example, just to cherry pick one of the labels he recorded for. But, you know, if nothing else, an Apple box set would be great from Ringo to have his four albums remastered. The albums could, uh, the discs are good, what we've been listening to for years, but mm. they could use a remastering. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe even add a fifth disc of non-album tracks that could be, that could include like It Don't Come Easy and Back Off Boogaloo along with unreleased material. That's five CDs there. Um, Ringo clearly has uh, an archive at his disposal in the way of putting together a bunch of photographs and have someone write nice liner notes in a book. Um, and he's got the time right now with, uh, you know, with COVID. Hopefully, uh, I think he definitely deserves at least an Apple box set, if not maybe even two box sets like George uh, did the Dark Horse stuff and then came the Apple the apple hmm. set okay uh and of course you know we'll say it every year um i'm looking forward to and hoping this happens that we'll get the next two mccartney reissues um i think that that's a decent possibility because we had heard about a let uh, about a uh, excuse me uh london town and back to the egg um expanded reissue so perhaps that that'll happen as well so uh, th those would be the things that I would like to see, uh, those three. And um, and we will see them there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep throwing in that line from the Honeymooners in case anyone doesn't pick up on it. And, and you got to also wonder, this is going to be an important year because, okay, so we had, we got Sgt. Pepper box and we get the, the, the White Album box, Happy Road, Let It Be. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. What about the earlier albums? Mm -hmm. And this year could be telling. In even if it's even if we get word on what maybe Giles Martin might be doing, uh, this year is going to or next year, twenty twenty two is going to be pivotal, and maybe seeing what the future is going to bring in the way of archival releases. For the I have to wonder if there's going to be a get back DVD Blu Ray. Will we also get in the same year another archival box set of Beatles? Because I was thinking, and and this is not far fetched here, <laughs> Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine, you know that hasn't come out yet, and the tracks from those, and like the, the stuff that ended up on Yellow Submarine that could have been on Sgt. Pepper, because they were recorded before Sgt. Pepper was released, except for Hey Bulldog, you know those were omitted you know they, those were overlooked there has to be a reason why that was done so you know is it possible we could get something like that i know a lot of fans yeah. want rubber soul and revolver to be next but we'll see if if we're going to get a dvd blu-ray of get back that could be it for next year and you know i'd be quite happy with just that and if anniversaries are a thing 2023 we're looking at the please please me 60th yeah mm -hmm. 60th anniversary of the first two albums right you know and i don't i don't know how material wise a box set of the please please me sessions would look possibly combining the two uh two albums please please me and with the beatles might be the way to go you know for the 60th anniversary well we shall see any theories on this, Alan? What do you um, think might happen? I, I think I'd rather see them as separate releases um, with the March 5th, 63 session added to Please Please Me. It seems closer to Please Please Me than, than with the Beatles to me. Um, you know, the session for From Me to You, Thank You Girl, and the early one after 909. Um, <clears throat> I think if they have any doubts about how to fill uh the box set of for please please me that would be one one thing that would help um although the question also then is how much of that do they want to put out you know we're talking about edit pieces and um broken broke breakdowns and, and things like that are they going to want to do that are they going to want to put out everything that's on uh you know bootleg mm, kind of doubt it uh wouldn't mind if they did um but you know, we'll, we'll see. 
Um, I think that we, we do know that with the uh, mal system that Peter uh, demonstrated for us, Peter Jackson demonstrated for us, uh, there is no longer any excuse about, um, you know, it being only mono or two track because that system can handle an awful lot. And uh, I, I think they should be using that. And they should be using that next year for the anniversary of the Hamburg recordings. Now, George says the Hamburg recordings were horrible. John probably did too. I don't know. The Beatles as a group don't like the Hamburg recordings, but they didn't like Let It Be sessions either. <laughs> um, and, you know, if all you've heard of the Hamburg recordings are things like the Linga song and Sony and all those other little labels that, that put those out, forget that. Those, that's not what the Hamburg tapes sound like. That's what the Hamburg tapes sounded like in 1977 after a producer took them, tried to make some kind of fake stereo using 1977 technology and overlaying them with crowd noise that wasn't there on the tapes. Um, the actual tapes, which have been bootlegged pretty plentifully in the last decade um, are much cleaner and really very interesting and have a lot of stuff that wasn't on the original issue. And uh, I really think that if they, again, use that mal system to go through those tapes, maybe make some separations, uh, they can probably put that stuff out sounding really good. Now, John always did say, I, I, you know, don't know, specifically what he said about these tapes, but he always said that in Hamburg is when they were really cooking. And I think that that part of their history should be brought into the official canon. Um, so that could be next year, it was 1962. So 2022, it's an anniversary. Um, and it would give them time to enact Darren's plan of putting Please Please Me in with the Beatles together in, in 2023, if that's what they want to do. Um, uh, are we doing my picks for next yeah, year? But yeah, but let me ask you, let me, what about Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine? Yeah, um, I don't see why not. I mean, that that is a, a, a period of sessions that hasn't been dealt with in the box sets yet. And uh, I, um you know, there must be some alternate takes and things like that that would be interesting to hear that haven't generally been bootlegged, except perhaps for the long version of um, It's All Too Much. We don't, we don't hear a lot of Yellow Submarine outtakes. Um, mm. But, um, you know, there must be. <laughs> there must be outtakes of those songs and the Magical Mystery Tour songs that might be interesting. There have been a few things from Magical Mystery Tour bootlegged. Um, you know, the Fool on the Hill demo, things like that. The Fool on the Hill demo might have even been on anthology already. It's hard to, it it's hard to remember what made the transition <laughs> from bootleg to, <laughs> to real mm -hmm. records. Um, but there's, you know, a, a lot of that stuff that was on an anthology can be, um, can sound a bit better now, you know, uh, with anthology, they did a lot of um, editing between things and stuff like that. They could possibly undo that the way they did during the pep in, in the peppery issue. Um, so yeah, that would be, that would be fine. And, uh, you know, also release that with a, with a cup of Blu-ray or two with the films on it in the, you know, latest transfer technology plus the uh, relevant promos. Yeah, that could be, mm -hmm. that could be quite good. Um, <clears throat> I, I do hope that um, the Harrison estate is um, encouraged by the reception of all things must pass to continue. Um, I've heard that they're gonna do uh, an upgrade of um, concert for, for, for Bangladesh next. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, you know, Concert for Bangladesh is actually in pretty good shape. Um, 
So maybe they could do that, but also while working on a box set for Living in the Material Worlds, you know, the next studio album. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that uh, I think that they should go with the momentum that was created by All Things Must Pass and uh, and the other things that brought attention to George this year. I think they should go with that and uh, you know and give us some. More. Would it be a would it be a little redundant for them to redo a concert for Bangladesh again? I, I kind of almost think so, but maybe. Um, I don't know what there is to do. I, I can't remember if the uh, last issue was in 5.1 or not. Um, but there are- And I'm thinking, I'm thinking of bonus material too, yeah. because the DVD when it came out also had rehearsal footage of George and Dylan, Dylan doing If Not For You, mm -hmm. um, Leon Russell, Come On In My Kitchen. Mm -hmm. You right. know, I don't know how much other stuff exists. Well, here's it would idea. be nice if uh, why don't the they just put out both show. concerts? Hmm? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, I know that in the case of Hear Me, Lord, which uh, was only played in the afternoon show, mm -hmm. I did ask Olivia. Um, why that's never come out and she said because they thought it wasn't good enough and that's just for one song mm. so they may not be happy with the performance of the first show i don't know we'll have to wait and see but i've thought about that myself can't you mix some of the afternoon show and make that bonus material we'll yeah. see mm -hmm. all right that's your wish list um, let's see. Uh, what Hamburg, about John? Uh, from John, well, yeah. I mean, they should continue with that series that's been going. You know, that that almost is automatic in a way. You know, um, except that I guess the next one would be sometime in New York City. Mm -hmm. Hasn't there been talk that that is going to happen? Yeah. Has been well, reissue of sometime in New York City. Hmm. There was a question that was posted, I think, on Instagram, and it's rumored that it's Sean that answered back and mm -hmm. said that next year is sometime in New York City, mm -hmm. that, you know, plans are underway. If yeah. there ever was an album that really needed maybe another look at, um, is it's that one. Um, it's probably the most criticized of Lennon's albums. Yeah, uh, yet there definitely are is. <laughs> who, really, who really like it. I mean, for me, the, the the main thing that doesn't work with the album is that the uh, the songs are dated. The subject, the subjects of what the songs are about mm -hmm. doesn't translate. The problem with topical songs is they don't necessarily translate well 50 years later. So if there ever was an album maybe that could benefit from a closer examination, it's sometime in New York City. And we've seen our perception of so many things about the Beatles later years change uh, a well done box set on sometime in new york city could very easily shine a different light on those sessions i know that um when we've talked uh, not here at least not while i've been uh, part of this show uh, when gary van syok and adam ippolito always spoke very highly about how great the sessions were mm -hmm. with john and yoko and and uh, took exception to any criticisms about mm -hmm. how they sounded so, uh, you know, maybe a look into those sessions would be uh, would be a good thing. Well, if yeah. a year from now we're all sitting here saying sometime in New York City, John Lennon's masterpiece, <laughs> we'll know that like something has changed about the world. Something's sort of, you know. <laughs> hmm. Well, you know, whether or not a song is dated has never had any effect on me whatsoever, you know. I just heard Hurricane from Bob Dylan on the radio, and I could care less you know, whether the song is dated or not. If I like it, if I liked it then, I like it now. I it's love John Sinclair is a favorite song of mine. You know, his name is not in the news these days, but who cares? I still love the song. I love the lyrics. I love the sound of it. I love the slide guitar. There's so much to love about a song than just the subject matter, too. And there's and they could add the 10 for two film. And, um, yeah. you know, and John's performance from from that show in uh, Michigan, 
uh, even uh, around then he played uh, at the Apollo. Uh, they mm -hmm. could they could add those things too. They actually could fill that set out uh, in a way that would be completely consistent with what they've done on Imagine and Plastic Ono Band, but also bring in everything else from the period um, and put out a, a book talking mm -hmm. all about what was going on. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's worth doing. You know, you know whether, was... whether it will mean a complete reevaluation of sometime in New York City, uh, you know, I, I kind of think probably not, but I, I'd love to hear hear it in context with all the other stuff from the, from yeah. the period. On paper, it was a great idea for an album from to come from John, a politically charged album. Mm -hmm. The artwork was brilliant to make it look like a newspaper with the lyrics as being the, the, uh, the stories. Um, Yoko taking was was more and more getting involved in the feminist movement at the time, so uh, that was I don't I, I don't recall a fly had many as many songs of the maybe the the beginnings of her addressing the feminist movement, but definitely sometime in New York City did. So on paper, it was a almost a can't miss of an idea for an album to come out of the John camp, just to finish product. Uh, was flawed so well, you know, that's a discussion for you know a complete show for the future you and never I like know darren's, how... darren's idea of a ringo box that's that makes sense too yeah yeah so sometime in new york city is one of those albums kind of like back to the egg there's so much that you could put out other than just the album right you know in the case of of sometime in new york city you could include the one-to-one -one concert in that yeah Mm. And there you also have two concerts. And there you also have the fact that we've got, we have in recent years sort of picked up on little rumors, little hints, little whispers about Jack Douglas redoing the concert and right. improving on the Live in New York City album. Mm -hmm. Well, I, so I did an sure. interview. I did an interview with Jack, which is on my website, where he talked about that. And it was only the video that there was a problem with, not so much the audio. Right. Mm -hmm. So, and what was the problem again with the video? Do you recall? He didn't go into detail about that. You know, that was towards the end of the interview, and I guess it was private. He couldn't reveal anything yeah. that soon, but uh, he was definitely working on the one-to-one -one concerts. There you go. So, uh, anniversary. You know, there's there's so much that you can put out from that time period and the TV appearances that they made with Elephant's Memory. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's a way to get the rights for that, how you clear that, you could put that on a DVD, you know, and um, we'll see. You, you, you never have, nobody knows how music that we look at a certain way now will be perceived 10 years from now or 50 years from now. It's like what we've been discussing, you know, now people might think differently of the whole get back let it be period just because of this documentary um and there's there's certain works that we've discussed a lot of mccartney's early albums now getting respect that it didn't have early on like ram mm -hmm. um you know mm -hmm. the, the diy albums so you just never know i think mind games is the most overlooked of john's solo albums but, but there are people that do love that album and it's my favorite of his I'd love to see that get reassessed in the future and more people appreciating that one. That could be 2023. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad you brought up these books, Alan, because the books that, that Yoko has put out on Plastic Ono Band and Imagine are tremendous. I mean, if you ever want to read a book of interviews from John, including Yoko, they're so revealing about themselves, whether it's specific songs from these albums or they could randomly pick quotes from other interviews that somehow apply to the song or that time. And you learn so much about the two of them. I mean, I've often said nobody's life is an open book, but John and Yoko's were it's pretty close. as close as you can get, you know? Yeah. And it's like, sometimes you feel like you're telling me too much here. <laughs> this is too private, but you read all this stuff in these books and I applaud Yoko for, releasing this stuff they're really major releases to go along with these archival box sets and they also stand on their own as books 
So was that it for everything from you, uh, Alan? Um, possibly. Um, you know, I always want more stuff so I could see <laughs> you all night. And, you know, what about the Mike Douglas shows that John? I was thinking on? of that. Mm. You know, those are out on DVD in Brazil or Argentina or someplace, but not in the U.S., not in England or anywhere in Europe. Um, you know, it's time for, um, you know, those to be looked at perhaps, uh, for DVD. I mean, they put out a big box set on VHS, but come on, time to upgrade that. It's a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Maybe they can tie that in with sometime in New York city somehow. Yeah. And, uh, so I don't know, otherwise I, I also, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll pirate Darren's Ringo idea and the, uh, two McCartney, um, archival reissues are, are musts. Um, so, uh, th those would be great. And, mm. uh, there, you know, there really should be a book about McCartney's work. Yeah. Will somebody get cracking on one? Yeah. 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 So and in actuality, you guys work, I think we've asked you this part two. You're underway, yeah. or you must be, right? We're working we're, on part two. Yeah, we're sort of researching part two now, and um, I believe have to start writing it sometime in 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 the beginning of 2022. That that will start soon. So, yeah, we we still need to edit the first you know you, you get your edits back from the editor go through and we have a huge list of things that we want to add or amend or tweak um but we're sort of waiting for the, the editor's notes so that we can do that all at once that's the next step on that one mm, okay well we can't wait me either okay <laughs> <laughs> all right my list i'm quite greedy here <laughs> All right, get back DVD and Blu-ray with more material. That's kind of obvious. The more material, the better. Um, get back soundtrack, if that's at all possible. Or if you want to put the audio on Blu-ray audio in the get back Blu-ray. Um, the original Let It Be film on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, we already discussed sometime in New York City box set with DVDs uh, for the one-to-one -one concerts. Hopefully both of them. Rehearsals for the concert the concerts um yeah it's endless what you could do with sometime in new york city once you add like we said tv appearances as well um concert for bangladesh box set like i said don't know how far you can go with that we'll have to wait and see if they're going strictly by anniversaries although they were off because of covid with all things must pass being a year late um so next year if they had bangladesh then in 2023, they'll be right on time with living in the material world mm -hmm. for a 50th anniversary. Um, Ringo, another EP, you know, keep them coming. I just love the fact that he's still recording new music and uh, a box set for Ringo of some kind. It could be one specific album. I'd love to see an archival box set for the Ringo album. If there ever was going to be one for any of Ringo's solo albums as much as i've raved about <clears throat> everything from time takes time on which deserves to be noticed the ringo album was his most successful the other beatles all three of the other beatles are on it um historically speaking it's a very significant album and it really does deserve an archival box set although i would love an apple years one like you said uh darren um for those first four albums and the singles that came out at that time too. From Paul, nobody's mentioned this, but It's a Wonderful Life, hmm. which we've been hearing about the last few years. Um, this all depends upon COVID and whether or not there's actually gonna be um, you know, performance of that in London on stage, um, like has been planned. We'll have to wait and see. If there is one, then there'll be some kind of soundtrack album, but it won't be Paul's vocals doing the songs but I'd love to hear that. Um, it would be nice if Paul released a new album. Let's face it, um, because of COVID, he probably hasn't gotten together with his band, band members. McCartney um, or. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that'll be in 2030 that'll be coming out. But whatever it is, you know the guy can't sit still for very long without creating all the time. So I can't believe in all, and ever since McCartney three, he hasn't been writing new songs. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he has. 
So it would be nice considering the fact that he's turning 80 in June. If he had a new album out by then to celebrate, I'd love to see that. Another archival box set. Um, yeah, I'd love to see a London Town Back to the Egg. I wouldn't mind Press to Play. I wouldn't mind Off the Ground. Um, any of those albums given an archival box set treatment. Again, this is all depending upon the situation with COVID. Um, Ringo's tour is supposed to uh, kick off in June. Right. We haven't heard anything yet from Paul. We probably won't until this late, latest variant of COVID is taken care of. And um, have to wait and see if Paul's gonna be back on the road. Also, um, Paul and Ringo and all family members remaining healthy. Yeah, you know? number one. You know, and uh, we know that Yoko has been, you know, not in the best of shape. She is 88. You know, we're thinking of her all the time, hoping that she remains healthy. Um, and all the other members of the family mm -hmm. and all the kids and grandkids. And uh, I'd like the world to be rid of COVID once and for all. <laughs> That's my wish for 2022. And now we will um, hold hands and Gather around the campfire for a final song of the year. <laughs> Ken, lead us into uh, a rendition of uh, I'd Like to See the World. <laughs> As a favor to our fans, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I, uh, I just very quickly, I wanted yeah. to mention um, some of the major passings for Beatle fans of the past year. Um, no doubt about it. So many people watching this were a major fan of Jerry Marsden, of Jerry and the Pacemakers. What a great singing voice, wrote a lot of great material. Ferry Cross, the Mersey, Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying. And of course, the beginning of his career, he was managed by Brian Epstein and produced by George Martin. We lost him in the past year. The animator Ron Campbell passed away, worked on the Beatles cartoons from the TV series, did some work on uh, Yellow Submarine. The musician Chris Barber passed away. He recorded Cat Call. Um, actually, it was originally Cat Walk, right? Alan? Cat, Cat Walk. Walk. And it was, it was turned into Cat Call. It was an instrumental that he released the end of 1967, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Paul wrote it, was an instrumental from the early years. And Paul was there in the session with, uh, with Chris Barber. Um, Zach Nilsson passed away, the very the first son of Harry Nilsson. Bill Elliott, one half of the team of Splinter, passed away. Uh, without a doubt, a rock and roll Hall of Famer and icon, Don Everly, a major influence, as the Everly brothers were on the Beatles. Charlie Watts, of course. Galen Pease and Lizzie Bravo both mm. passed away, the two girls who are on the first version that came out of Across the Universe on the World Wildlife album, later on Past Masters, uh, volume two. And of course, just recently, Michael Nesmith. So all these major losses uh, for Beatle fans in the year 2021. All right, uh, I guess that's it for, for uh, our show this time. This is our final show of the year. And uh, both you guys can give our viewers information on what we're doing and how we uh, how they can get a hold of you. Alan, let's start with you. Okay, so you can um, contact me through Facebook either at plain old Alan Cozen or Alan Cozen Remixed. Um, we also have two Facebook pages: Things We Said Today and Things We Said Today. Beatles radio fans, uh, and we have an email address you can write to uh, that all of us can pick up. So you can write to any or all of us uh, at things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. And we have a Twitter feed, which is at things we said fab. Um, we hope you're watching this on our YouTube channel. Um, but we also have audio versions on Podbean and iTunes and various other places. 
Uh, please subscribe to us wherever you catch our podcasts. Um, and um, I think that basically is it. So have a happy, healthy, and successful new year, everyone out there. Mm. All right. Thank you, Alan. Darren? All right. Well, you can email me directly if you want to at DarrenDeVivo at WFUV.org. Uh, and I'll share, you know, and I've received a handful of emails. I'll share them with, uh, with Ken and Alan. Uh, look for me on Facebook. I have two pages. One is Darren DeVivo. Uh, the other page, uh, Darren DeVivo, um, WFUV DJ and Beatle Podcaster, I think, is the name of it. Uh, in a perfect world, they're supposed to have separate content, but they don't. Uh, uh, so you can look for me there on Facebook. Very easy to find. And um, I will return to the airwaves of WFUV on Tuesday night, January 4th at 10 p.m. as I've taken a couple of weeks off. So I'm not on the air now. Normally you can catch me Monday through Thursday nights, 10 p.m. till uh, right now till midnight, hoping to stretch that back to the old 2 a.m. time, uh, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. But right now, 10 to midnight, Monday through Thursday and Saturdays from one to four. Um, and on Facebook actually, and I hope I remember <laughs> and I don't forget, uh, hopefully in the next few days, I'll post my uh, personal favorite albums and songs of the year as uh, compiled for WFUV. So that'll be on my Facebook pages, uh, if, as long as I don't forget. And Ken and Alan will uh, attest to this. Darren tends to forget a lot. And I'm sorry to take after you. Um, <laughs> I think that's it, right? The email address, look for me on Facebook, the radio thing. And I'll I'll pass it on over to Ken. Ken. So be <laughs> thank you, Darren. Message, kind of um, yeah, my uh, my email address is every little thing at att.net. I have a YouTube channel which uh, is doing really well. Lots of new subscribers. Thanks to all of the new ones who are. Uh, who are subscribing to my channel, Ken Michaels Radio. I just did an interview with Dr. Bob, that's Robert Hieronymus, and Laura Kortner for their new book. And like I said earlier, we interviewed them earlier this year. It's all in the mind, Inside the Beatles Yellow Submarine, Volume 2. And actually prior to that, I did an interview with Bruce Spizer and Al Sussman for the new book of uh, Magical Mystery Tour and Yellow Submarine. So between both those interviews, lots of Yellow Submarine talk. Get your fill of Yellow Submarine on my YouTube channel. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe. My other podcast show, Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. The next show will be on Monday, January 10th. And that will be on our YouTube channel. We actually do the show live when it first comes out on our YouTube channel for Talk More Talk. Used to be on our Facebook page, now it's on our YouTube page. So I don't know what the topic will be. We're gonna be talking about that uh, before then. And so the next show for that, like I said, January 10th, our next show on things we said today will probably be the following week around January 17th, just to let you guys know. Okay, my website is kenmichaelsradio.com. There's loads of interviews that I've done in the past that are strictly audio interviews that you can find there on various pages. And I do have weekly Beatles trivia where you can win one of 10 great prizes every single week. And speaking of Yellow Submarine, the name of my Beatle game for this week is called All Together Now. It tests your knowledge of Beatles trivia and uh, you can win a Beatle book a CD, a DVD, even vinyl. I have the two album version of Imagine from a few years ago that's up for grabs. One of the many great prizes that I give away on my website. Again, that's kenmichaelsradio.com. All right, so right now, uh, what I would like to do is just thank all of you, listeners and viewers of the show, whether you've been, <laughs> why did you put that up, Darren? <laughs> I figured everybody loves a llama. It's the okay. last show of the year, so why not? He's listening. Okay. He'll come back. Later. Como se llama? <laughs> or llama. Um, 
So whether you've been uh, following our show from the very beginning when it started with Steve Marinucci and me through all the years with uh, Al Sussman and Al Cozen and me, and then later with Darren, thank you for being there. And for all the brand new subscribers, many of which I'm sure we got from that Peter Jackson interview, and we should thank Peter Jackson immensely, as well as all the different guests that we've had in the past year including Dr. Bob and Laura Kortner. David Bedford was with us. Jerry Hammack was with us. Um, Ken Womack and Jason Krupa for the book, All Things Must Pass Away. Uh, thanks to all of them for being a part of this show. I also want to thank Beetle Ed, who runs fab4radio.com. It's a 24-7 all Beatles channel. They carry things we said today. They carry my syndicated Beatles show, Every Little Thing. They carry Talk More Talk. They carry two legs with Tom Hunyadi and Andy Nichols. It's all one great big family. And on that channel, you, you'll hear all four of those shows. So for Beatle Led, thanks for carrying all, all those programs and to everyone who listens to fab4radio.com. And uh, that's about it. This has been a tremendous year. And uh, on behalf of Alan and Darren and the Lama, I'd like to wish you all nothing but happiness, joy, and great health, and good things to come. And hopefully, like I said, I wish you were COVID-free mm -hmm. uh, as soon as possible. No, here, here. Love and peace to all of you, and we'll see you all same time next year. Take care. Take care.